Hi everybody, welcome. Uh, <laughs> I have a, a little crabby cat here today who uh, is trying to get into everything, everything mischief making. Hello, welcome. Hi Sahara, welcome. Linda, Abby, welcome guys. Come in, come in. <laughs> Good morning. Lovely Friday morning here in the AU. Meow. Yes, it is Shadow. Say hello to everybody. Say Meow. hello. What are you doing over there? She's uh, staying far enough away from me as to not get into trouble. <laughs> hello, Joe Beth. Welcome, Megan. Welcome, guys. Come in and uh, join in the fun. Shadow, come on. Stop playing, please. Um, yes, and Shadow says hello to everybody. She's into mischief today. She's climbing through all my stuff. Uh, she knocked my Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils on the floor, which I was not impressed about, was I, Shadow? Me? Shadow? Shadow? Wow. She always seems to uh, find stuff to get into. Stuff that I've left sitting and didn't expect her to get into, she's been getting into. Are you coming over to say hello? Wow. Come on then. Hello. Oh, Shadow, you're too cute. No, not the camera. You can't kiss the camera. It moves and makes everybody dizzy. Say hello. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> Shadow, are you a rat bag? Wow. Yes, you are. Fibber. Fibber. Wow. Oh, Tails wow. flicking the camera. Yes, we are in the future, that's right, but we don't know lottery numbers, no. No, we don't. Yeah, she's a rat bag today. She's just getting into all this mischief. Hi, Holly. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, welcome. So uh, I've, I've managed to get a flip through organized for today's today's uh, live. So, <laughs> so this time I don't have to make one halfway through, thankfully. Now, um, I've only picked the pumpkin leaves and um, the grass and the stems to do today because, and also the glow inside the pumpkin. Because we've got four weeks um, and the image is fairly basic, It's I'm just going to take my time with it. <laughs> so next week we'll work on the pumpkins and the rest of the background here. And then on the last week, we'll work on the cat. I may do the eye in the cat today too, just to, um, we'll just see how much time we've got. Uh, but I'll be using similar colors in the eye as I'm going to be using in the glowing parts. So there you go. That will be fun. <laughs> yes, make sure you're on live chat, not top chat party, which I was on last week. <laughs> Also, too, make sure you check the settings of the video. Uh, I have got it up to 720 today. Uh, if it's a little bit fuzzy, it may be because it's been defaulted back to the lower one. Um, but, yeah, make sure you fix it up. For those that are new here, my name is Belinda and welcome. Oh, I just bumped the mic, sorry. It's in my way. Uh, I've got to get a... a get Hi, Star, Welcome. I have to get a proper uh, stand to hold my mic. At the moment, it's sitting on my desk, and I pick up all the little noises, so um, it's a little frustrating. But once I get it so that it's uh, hanging over me, uh, it will be easier. I won't be able to bump it as much. <laughs> no worries, Megan. Shannon, welcome. Laura, hello. Isabel, welcome, guys. Come in. Everybody's jumping in now. Dawn, hello. Janine, welcome, guys. 
Very awesome. So how is everyone going with their Halloween stuff? I finished another witch, which um, I've already posted. So this was this week's new witch, The Season of the Witch by NS Guerrero. And I've actually done a full Patreon video for this one. I've just got a little bit of voice recording to finish and uh, this one will be available as a full tutorial on Patreon. Uh, so if you'd like to see that, check Patreon out. So that's five witches down. I got 12 to do, so <laughs> it's getting there. Um, the next one I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do some Luminance skin because I haven't done a lot of Luminance skin. Also too guys, um, I'm admin of a Facebook group for Linda Ravenscroft and uh, we're having a Halloween event going on there. We're just doing an image from Linda's, uh, one of Linda's books uh, and have it Halloween related. So I'm going to do a wizard. I'm going to do the calling of Merlin. So I might actually do this page live, not this Monday because I'm going away, the following Monday, uh, which will be, for most of you, uh, it will be on the Sunday the 20th. Here in Australia, that's the 21st, which is the Monday. So I'm going to have a go at that one then. Uh, so I won't be live this week on Monday. I may, if I get time, I may do a stream perhaps Tuesday uh, instead. But I'll see how I'm going because obviously we're going to be away. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Thank you, everybody. Hi Pat, welcome. Come in, come in. All right, so um, yeah, so stuff coming. <coughs> Excuse me. Cough, cough, splutter, splutter. So Jenny Lewin, fabulous artist. She does some cute little images. Um, I love her coloring and uh, she's been doing little ink Inktober images and they're absolutely gorgeous but check her out all of her details are in the description if you would like to get a copy of this image I'm going to post up the link for you now it is free until the end of October 2019 for those watching it uh, far away in the future and uh, it is available in the actually the book I'm going to flip through today the Shibby Doodle Whimsy Characters Coloring Book Volume 3 um, and I'm going to do a flip through of that one today too. So, hi Mia, welcome. Hi Zeely, welcome. All right. So, this book, let me just look what I've got here. Oh, first of all, if you're not on Facebook, there is a color list here. If you would like the list of colors that I'm using today and also the conversions to Polychromos, Prismacolor, Black Widows and Shapir Farben, I think I did those and Holbins, did I say that? So those pencils there. So if you don't have Pablo's, you might have one of the others uh, that you can choose from. Also too, I put a swatch chart uh, of my Pablo's on Facebook in the Facebook group event uh, so if you wanted to have a look at those colors and uh, convert to your own brands as well so I think I'm ready to start any questions before I start <laughs> I tend to miss a lot of chat when I'm actually coloring and uh, today I'm going to try my every effort to uh, answer questions and see what's going on in chat but you know I say that every week <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. All right, so let's get started. Mm -hmm. So today I'm going to be using Pablo pencils and I'm using Strathmore Mixed Media Vellum Surface Paper today as well. I'm going to pop those links up in the chat box if you would like to check those out. 
All my other favorite products are in the description below the video as well. So if you'd like to check those out too, you may. Please assume that all links I post are affiliate links. It does mean that I do make a small commission from those links if you purchase. There is no extra cost to you for doing that. So thank you very much for your support. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's have a look. I've got all my favorite little bits. I've got my Luminance white pencil or the Prismacolor white pencil, just in case. I probably won't use those now because the Pablo white is actually quite soft, so I don't mind using that one. I've got two different size jelly roll pens, a 8 and a 5. This is a 0.5 mil nib, this is a 0.3 mil, mil nib, so they're small and larger size. I've got my mono eraser, Caran Dash full blender in an extender. And the colours I've got listed here are, let me pick them up. Also too, um, I took a few, when I used <laughs> my paint pen last week, I went a bit overboard. So I actually erased or removed some, scratched it off basically, of the white smudges that I had across the sky. Uh, I think it was a little bit too much, so I took some off. Um, that's a great thing about using paint pen on top of pencil too, because it scratches off quite easily. All right, so today we're going to be using Ivory Black. Green Ochre. Canary Yellow. Brown Ochre. Olive Black. Olive Black was a hard one to convert because there's not a lot of other brands that have that kind of colour. A Bistre or Bister Yellow Flame Red Orange White Olive Brown and Ochre. I find that the Pablo pencils don't have as many dark colors as some of the other brands like Prismacolor and Polychromos. Uh, all of their colors are kind of pastel-y. Like the Holbens, I find the Holbens don't have a lot of darker colors either. Um, but I really do love how they lay down. Pretty. What? Linda. <laughs> people just don't understand other people's hobbies, that's all. Um, but I, I guess for some people it's not just a hobby, it's something, it's therapy. So um, I'm so sorry to hear that. I just, I don't have a personal Facebook anymore, so uh, I just, you know, my family can unfollow me if they want. <laughs> and uh, they won't have to get all my stuff, but um, most of them are pretty good. <laughs> it's okay, Sahara. No problems. That's right, Sahara, they're, they're hobbies. Anyway, um, mm, a little frustrating, I'm sure. I'm sure. Oh dear. Where is my. Oh. I'm just grabbing my sample page so I remember what I'm doing. Uh, for these four week events, I try to uh, do, you know, obviously to give you guys the colours, I try to do a little bit of a sample beforehand. So, <laughs> I used to have that. I'm I'm highly addicted to uh, games. <laughs> I'm a gamer, and. Um, I had to, I have to have separate lists for, 
um, for family and gamer friends, gamer gaming friends, uh, because the same thing used to happen to me. <laughs> Why do you post so much crap? <laughs> um, so yeah, I've just, uh, cause I scratched out some of the mist that I did. There are a couple of areas that I hadn't put any small dots so I just wanted to add those in. Just a couple. Don't know, I couldn't find my pen at the time, who knows. Anyway, <laughs> let's get started. So I want to do these leaves and I want to kind of make them so that we can see the reflection of the moon through them and also we can see the reflection of the moon around them as well. So um, I've done the colours kind of in a olive and you know mossy type colours because I want it to look kind of dark and um, I really want the moon to sort of come through and shine through that. Zeely, <laughs> so true. Um, actually, I was watching a police show here in Australia. Um, I think it's called. I don't know. I don't know what it's called. You guys in in Australia might know what it's called, but um, they pull people over for, you know, speeding and they test people for drugs and alcohol and things like that. And um, I was watching one uh, last year. And um, the police lady that was cleaning out this car said uh, she found a whole heap of colouring supplies. And uh, she was saying, oh, yep, colouring supplies. Generally, when we find colouring supplies in the car, it means they're meth addicts. I'm like, how rude. <laughs> I was like, I don't know whether to be offended by that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it was. It, people just don't see, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard, isn't it? But anyway, very offended by that comment by that uh, police officer. <clears throat> I know. Uh, it's an Australian show, so uh, yeah. <laughs> oh dear. I know, yeah. The Australian one, I think it's called... Um, RBT? No. There's a couple. There's two of them. I, I have no idea. But anyway, I was quite offended by that comment. Quite offended. <laughs> <laughs> I don't keep my colouring stuff in the car too, but I'm assuming um, she was implying that when they keep it in their car, that's what she says. Um, but I was like, well, that's, they shouldn't say things like that. It's stereotyping people who colour. And um, also, those people may be having serious issues. So it could be therapy for them too. So that's really frustrating. <laughs> um, but yeah, I couldn't keep my colouring supplies in my car. Could you imagine me keeping my markers in my car? That would just be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> too many, too many, too many. Mm -hmm. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I am going to use olive black. Hello, olive. Ah. And I'm going to colour down the right hand side of the vine. Let me zoom in because I want you to be able to see. Hello. <laughs> I'd have I'd have to have mine in like a secured lockbox in my car if I was gonna do that. I couldn't imagine losing them. <laughs> yeah, any of my supplies in fact. Uh, when we come down to the curly sections of the vine, I'm just going to colour underneath the crossover piece. And uh, I'm going to keep going 
on the right hand side until I get to the top here because I want this section here to be light because it's facing the moon and underneath there I want to do darker. This is not going down so well. Okay, and then I'm just going to follow that around the back to this one. So can we see what I'm doing here? So I'm going to come around this side of the vine until I get up here to the top. And then I'm just going to swap and do underneath again, coming all the way around and down the back of the vine again. Does that make sense? So this whole left side that's facing the moon is going to be my lightest side. So I want to make sure I try and keep that nice and light. I'm just going to do a bit of a shadow where the vine crosses over though. So we can see it's crossed over. We're going to come all the way around and under this one till we get near the top here. And then I'm going to swap and do the back side. Ha ha ha, back side. <laughs> but, <laughs> but. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hi, Brittany. Welcome. Welcome, my lovely people. Oh, I bumped it again. It's in my way. Well, Sahara, that's different. You were going away for a period of time, so... Um, I mean, I would take something like that, polys or prismas. Probably polys uh, would be less like, likely uh, to break and be damaged. So, yeah, I would probably take something like that. Oh, yes. Karen Dash. Which Karen Dash pencils did you come home with? <laughs> I still need to get my luminance. I've only got a few of them, so... Okay, I'm just doing some light pressure just around this thicker part here. Just add a little bit of colour in there. Now on the very edge of it, I'm actually going to come in with my black and just redo, but coming closer over the sky area. Just to sort of, I guess, uh, show a bit of a line between the sky And the stalk. Because it wasn't very even there. There we go. Just filled that in a bit. And uh, I just want to use a little bit of this in the shadow area of this as well. So just coming on the side down here. I'm just using medium light pressure. I just wanted to fill a little bit of shadow in there. I'm going to come over the top of that again with the olive black. Just with light pressure this time. Adding some colour into the vine. Like that. And then I'm going to use some green ochre. And I'm going to fill out the left side, blending it over the top of the shadows as well. So you should be able to see now some really nice highlights happening on the lighter side. And some dark shadows on the other side that's not facing the moon. I like that. How easy was that? Just putting a little bit of pressure down to cover over all of the white and the tooth of the paper. And then we'll come back in with that olive black again and just make sure that we've got plenty of shadow on the shadow side. go. 
just like that. It's kind of hard when it's shiny like that, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm just going to add a little bit more black around the outside here because I've got a little bit of tooth coming through that section. I just want to cover it over. Because we used the, uh, well, I used the latex. I can't even remember what it's called now. It's just completely left my mind. No, it's gone. It'll come back to me. Someone else will just pop it up there and I'll go, yeah, that's it. <laughs> we used a bit of a liquid latex to cover over the white paper of the vine so that we wouldn't go into that area so we could colour it. And uh, because we've come right up to the edge of it, I'm just making sure that it's all coloured around it now. And I'm also going to go in with that little jelly roll pen and just put a couple more... Did you buy Pablo's? Ah! Yay! Hi Trish, welcome. Uh, Kenny, yeah, it's earlier for you guys because it's daylight savings here, so it's an hour earlier than normal. <laughs> um, hi Sherry, welcome. So, and Linda, welcome sweetheart. How is your baby? I, I did Holly, congratulations. I'm just looking, goodness me, all these people just popped in. Prismal ones, I think they came with the deluxe box set. Hmm. Prismal. I don't know what Prismal, oh. Okay. Oh, I haven't used them. I've got the Caran d'Ache. God, Caran d'Ache have got so many brands or, or products, don't they? I'm using Pablo's, yes. Oh, okay. It is so hard because... Um, so Karen Dash have... I'll like, try to explain it. It is sort of difficult to understand sometimes. Especially when you're new to colouring and you haven't heard of different things. I'm just grabbing... A couple of different types of the same brand okay so Karen Dash is a brand and Karen Dash so it's like uh, let's think of something that has a brand with different products. Uh, something famous, guys. Come on, give me something. <laughs> Let's say Nike shoes. All right, so this is not sponsored at all, by the way. Uh, Nike have different brands of shoes. Uh, the same brand, but different types. So they might have the Nike Air and the Nike Pump or... Do you know what I mean? Like there's different types of products in that same brand. So when it comes to pencils, Caran Dash, this is the Caran Dash logo. This is what the Caran Dash logo looks like. Caran Dash have different types of pencils. So Techno is one of their types. Museums is one of their types. Karen Dash Pablo. So Pablo is one of their types. Another one by Karen Dash is Luminance. So that's a different type of pencil. Uh, what Sahara was saying was that she's got Prismol, which is a brand of Karen Dash, which is a type of Karen Dash pencil as well. And I've also got. Uh, another type of Caran d'Ache pencil is the um, Super Color. I have those. So there's lots of different types under the same brand. So Pablo's is a type under the Caran d'Ache brand. And Luminance is a type underneath the Caran d'Ache brand. 
museums is a type under the Karen Dash brands. So, brand. So, does that explain to those that are new and don't have or haven't heard of other brands or other types? So, Faber Castell have another, they're another example of loads of different types of pencils. So, uh, Faber Castell have Faber Castell Classic, they've got Faber Castell. Um, uh, Polychromos, they've got the uh, Faber, what are they? Faber Gold, Gold Faber pencils. Uh, they've got a whole range of different uh, pencils under their brand, so or products under that current under that Faber Castell brand. So there's also the Albrecht Dura. Um, they've got Faber Castell have watercolor pencils. They've, so there's lots of different types of pencils or products under the Faber Castell brand. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, Luminance, I'm the same. I only have a select few Luminance pencils. I've been collecting them gradually, but here it costs me $4 a pencil to buy them individually. <laughs> CC. <laughs> Um, I've only been on for half an hour, Kenny. Not long. You haven't missed much. I haven't done anything yet. Just this bit. <laughs> um, coming back to filling out some more spots on my on my picture. Oh, now my pencil's not working. So Copic or Copic, however you guys say it. Apparently, it doesn't matter which way you say it. It's either either uh they that pencil's not pen's not working for some reason and i haven't got my alcohol swab thing out so i'm just going to grab another one for now uh, down the side of the vine i'm just going to add a few thin lines just to show the highlight side I'm just scratching them off if I mess them up or they're not neat enough. It's just a really thin line just to show the highlight of the moon coming down onto that. This top one's not right. I'm just going to do that. And I'm using the thinnest one just to show us a little bit of light. We've just been chatting, Kenny, about uh, different things. Sahara's had a lovely holiday in England, is that right? Sahara, I'm just going to put a tiny little reflection on this side too, just a little one. But um, we've mainly got that reflection on this left side here where the moon is. And that's it, that's all I'm going to do for that one. We're good. Looks good. I'll just move my camera slightly. It's having a bit of a problem right now. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, Derwent. Yeah, Derwent's another one that has heaps. Uh, Derwent have got Color Soft, Light Fast, Derwent Classic, Derwent Studio, Derwent Artist, Derwent <laughs> Watercolor. They've got loads of different. Um, products under their brand. Uh, even Prismacolor uh, have Prismacolor, uh, the Prismacolor pencils I use are the standard, what are they guys, does anyone know? Hang on, I've got one here somewhere. Where's that white gone? These are Prismacolor Premier, but there's Prismacolor, is it Verithin? Uh, there's also Prismacolor, they have a water-based, or watercolor ones as well. Polychromos are one of my favorite pencils. They're the most durable, they're the most versatile, um, and they give really good results. Especially when someone's learning because you can use a little bit of firmer pressure with them and it doesn't sort of affect it too much. 
I do find that people are learning with Prismacolor, they find it hard to use really light pressure. So uh, I always suggest Polychromos above those. Um, and also the quality of the Polychromos pencil is so much better than the quality of a Prismacolor pencil. They're slightly different though. A Polychromos is an oil-based pencil and the Prismacolor is a wax-based pencil. So they are slightly different. And I would suggest trying both types because most people that don't like wax or the softer pencils really love the harder pencils and those that don't like the harder pencils really love the softer ones so give it a go <laughs> so don't <laughs> um i love the intense intense is my favorite product in derwent <laughs> Um, very thin, yeah, yep. Oh, there's Scholar, that's right, thanks, Laura. Uh, the, uh, that's what, uh, actually, Laura and I were having a chat about the colour fastness of Prismacolor. They don't have a colour fast, um, they don't have a very good light fast rating, whereas Polychromos have a better. Um, obviously Pablo's have got a really good one too, but they've all got, so Pablo's have got like a light fast, there's like a star rating on them. So some of the pencils don't have a very high rating. Usually it's the yellows. Um, depends on what color it is, but yeah, they've all got ratings on them. Um, usually the better quality pencils do. <laughs> I'm going to get started on the stalk next. I'm going to use four colours for the stalk. I've got Bister or Bistray. And uh, I'm just going to draw in kind of like, uh, I don't even know what it is, but they're crease lines in the stalk. And uh, I'm going to bring this one around there. I'm going to put another one down there, like that. Okay. Now, as I said, I want to put a a bit of re uh, light reflecting through the leaf uh, from the moon. So I'm actually going to draw in the rest of the stalk behind it here. Just coming around like that. This one just coming down like that. And also the pumpkin is kind of sitting behind. So I'm just going to guess that roughly is going to be the shape of that pumpkin. So we've got a couple of little... So we're going to get at least that in our silhouette behind. So we want this section here to be quite dark so that these will look like the light is reflecting through them. So I think I need another line here coming down the back here. They're not neat and they don't have to be perfect. This is nature. Nature's strange and unusual. <laughs> I'm going to put a shadow of the Bister Ray or Bister. I don't I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but we're gonna put a shadow in here. Shadow underneath here as well. And also a shadow on the bottom here. So that's just light pressure I've done there. And look, I think we need a line here as well. So this is the back of the stalk coming through the leaf. Does that make sense? 
Oh yeah, Copic. Co- Co- I was saying that they've got different uh, products as well. They've got um, in their markers, they've got different types of markers. They've got the classics, the Chow and the Sketch. They've also got wide. Um, so there's different types. And then they've also got pens. So there's Copic Multiliners and there's Copic... Um, what are these ones called? <laughs> That's a multi-liner in a brush one. They've got these SP brand multi-liners. So they're a little bit more expensive and they've got refills and they've also got replacement nibs. Um, they've also got uh, fine liners and uh, like ink and they've got heaps of products. Heaps of products. I'm just coming in a little bit darker now in the very shadows so just coming over it again with a little bit more pressure this time to add in another layer and then I've lightened off my pressure as I've come further out so I'm just lightening it up now Now I've just drawn in that line, I'm just going to use the ivory black and just come in and put a black line through there to add a little bit of depth. And also a black line around the leaf. Just sort of softening it off a little bit into that brown. Going around the leaf, just around the bottom of the pumpkin there, and just softening it off by lightening that pressure out in towards that brown. Now here I'm actually going to add a little bit of a highlight uh, with the pen, so we can see a little bit of that reflecting through. Leslie welcome hello Rochelle welcome guys there is loads of different type of papers and uh, hi Kelly welcome 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 and uh, there's paper for everything Jenny welcome sweetheart thank you for dropping in we haven't done our flip through yet and I did make one this week <laughs> didn't forget <laughs> uh, back to the bister or bistery. Maybe it's completely different. Maybe I've actually just pronounced that completely wrong. Um, who knows? Now, the uh, brown ochre. Excuse me. I'm going to try to do the brown ochre in the middle. Here, just a little bit over the top of the other areas here where I've already added a shadow. Just wanted that little bit of color difference in that middle one there. And then I've got uh, some ochre coming out here on the top because it's a lot lighter up here. Putting a little bit of this over that middle area there as well and underneath. And then I've got the green ochre. Green ochre. And uh, I'm going to do the lightest section here. And 
and I'm just going to flatten off the rest of the area with this one flattening the tooth off and making it nice and smooth and getting rid of all of those white marks in there I've got a little bit of the white especially down the bottom here where that stalk I've gone over it a little bit so I've just sort of created a little bit of a highlight there just coming around the top and uh, blending that out a little bit just creating a really nice highlight part there I do want to add a little bit of a highlight at the back here too so I've just added that on there just a little bit now if your tooth is not completely flat and you don't want to come back in you could use something like the Caran d'Ache full blender this is what it looks like before it shrinks down to absolutely nothing so usually it comes in a two pack and they're really long and um, I've been putting mine now directly into a pencil extender to protect it uh, so that you don't break them because they break very very easily so I would suggest highly suggest getting a uh, extender to go on it so you don't break it and uh, you just use the extender over the top of the pencil and what it does is it flattens out the tooth it evens out the color sometimes it even makes the color a little bit darker depending on what you're using and depending on what paper you're using too you can quite often go over the top of this again so I could add a little bit more depth in the black area there and then the vista over the top just increasing the depth and the shape And I'm going to use a soft brush just to brush that clean and uh, let's just use a little bit of the ochre just to blend that darker color out into those lighter areas there a little bit I'm happy with that I think that looks groovy groovy baby jelly roll pen Well, I only did two, I did like a base layer and then I went over it again and then I used the blender over the top and then I went over it again. So that was like three layers. <laughs> Just adding some white gel pen. I think I'm going to need to get a clean thing out here and clean them. Just to the very edge, just to add in that highlight that we were talking about here on the, the stem. Or the vine that's coming off there just enough to add a bit of a glow around the outside we're going to have a giveaway today too how cool is that Jenny's amazing so it looks like the light is reflecting off that now going to shrink that so there a little bit we could also on this one because we've got a little bit of a high point in here add a couple of little highlight spots in here as well Ooh, I love my pollies. Oh, 
okay, Linda. Um, try using, have you got the same brains? I do find that the Jelly Roll pen, the thinner one, is a little bit more realistic highlight wise uh, because it's not as thick. It's nice and thin and it goes on nice and thin. You'll be able to see that more once I scan it in too. Remember we've got a reflection of the light here so we can hardly see what I've actually done there. But when I scan it, you'll be able to see that more clearly. Oh, I'm not sure then. I mean, sure my stars look like they've been painted on, but... <laughs> oh, did you get them back, Holly? Oh, gel pens are difficult sometimes over pencil, but I can show you how to clean them. got a cotton pad just you know when a swab cotton swab and you can use I'm actually going to use colorless blender but it's exactly I actually I could grab the other one out okay, I've got rubbing alcohol or Copic Various ink in the colorless blender, which is just colorless ink or alcohol, I should say. Uh, they're exactly the same thing, so they'll both do exactly the same thing. And I'm just going to put some of that alcohol onto my cotton swab here. Whoops. <laughs> It's all right, it's paper, I can rub it, I can screw it up and throw it away later. And one of these actually wasn't working properly, so let me see if I can get, okay, so here, let me zoom in. Not working. Let's just rub it over the alcohol. A little bit more. Just to remove any of the wax that's built up inside it and just to move the ball around a little bit. There we go. It's working again. That's a really fine one, so you can't see it very well anyway, but that's working again now. If you find that it's a really tough one, you may need to actually drip some of the alcohol. Uh, drip some. I've just got it in a little bottle here. You may need to drip some over the nib a little bit to soak it in and then give it a really good scrub with the, it's on my paper there so that helped. There you go. It's working again. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Because I find that uh, they do block up really easily because the wax or the oil on the pencils builds up in the nib. Look, it's all wet now. <laughs> and um, it causes that build up. So it's fairly easy to fix. All you need is alcohol. Rubbing alcohol or colourless blender, which I use mainly because it's there. And uh, it, it, it cleans out the tip. Yeah, it's so, it's so much easier than you think to clean them out. Sometimes, though, I have a couple of pens that I'm constantly cleaning out. So I'm not sure whether the um, tip is sharper even. Like there might be sharp pieces on the tip and it's grabbing more of the oil or the wax off the pencil. So, yeah. Uh, well, alcohol is a solvent of most products. <laughs> so, uh, you should be able to get a fairly good smooth running ink by doing that because you're dissolving the wax and other crap that's on your nib. Let's do our leaf. Um, okay, so we have our blocked out area. These are going to be quite dark. So I'm just coming over with a light layer of black, ivory black. I'm just going to stop it there. I don't know what shape they are on the back of leaves, but we're just going to stop it there. <laughs> it's been cut off at the back there. 
So I'm just filling in those areas that are blocked out for shadows. Because there's objects behind them, the moon's not going to be able to penetrate through these sections. So they are going to be quite dark. So now I've coloured that, I'm actually going to come underneath that as well. But I'm going to draw a sharp line around the leaf. Just like that. And then I'm just going to do a light layer around the outside. And what we'll do is when we come to the pumpkin, we'll blend in the orange and browns up into this. And we'll be able to see that shadow on that pumpkin really well. Okay, so we're not going to do that now. We'll fix that up next week. But I just wanted to finish off the bottom of it so that we can see where that's going to be finishing, I guess, and where the leaf begins. Just going over with another layer just to coat over most of the tooth. I'm going to use that olive black again. And we're going to put a little bit of pressure down and cover over the tooth of the paper. Not too much, we don't want to push too hard that we break the pencil. I've done that a few times. Actually, Loretta's not here today. She's usually the one that points out the snaps. <laughs> Hi Helen, no problems. Yes, if you did lose it, um, you're right. Sahari can do that. Hi Pam. And my lovely Kenny is still here. Who else just popped in? I pop it in. I hope I've said hi to everyone. If not, yell at me. Yell at me. We had a broken camera once that we had to claim. Just over the leaf area in this section here. There we go. And we'll come back over it again in a minute. But for now, I'm happy with that. Ah, hi, Beth. Beth Ann there yelling at me. Good. Awesome. Loretta watching on TV. Ah, oh, she's talking to you, Mia. <laughs> Oh, okay, so she can chat. Well, hello, Miss Loretta. I missed you there before. Ah, there she is. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's add some depth into the leaves now. We've got some lines, so I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure down. I'm going to go over these veins with heavy pressure. Put a really nice thick layer of colour over it. There are darkest areas of the leaf. Looking good. We're going to add a little bit of the olive black on the outside as light pressure, so just some shading. Just like that. 
I'm going to do that over the whole vein area. Kind of blending off the edge so that it looks kind of smooth in the transition between that really dark layer and the lighter layer. So I can explain that a little bit better perhaps down here on this scrappy bit down here. We've done a line as heavy pressure and then right next to that we're going to do a little bit lighter than heavy pressure and then right next to that we do lighter again and then lighter again and lighter again. So we've started off quite dark and we've blended that dark Oh, that would be my alarm going off, telling me it's time to do a flip through. So what we've done is we've blended that line so that it looks like it's just gotten lighter. We haven't actually drawn a line and then added colour to it. We've blended it out to a lighter colour. And then to do it on the opposite side... So we're blending it out so it's nice and smudged and smooth to our lighter colour. <laughs> um, I use Facebook, Instagram and Patreon to post most of my things. I do post some things on a blog and and uh, on Twitter. I find that Twitter's not as popular as Instagram and Facebook for colouring though. Do you know how in some places you kind of feel like you're out of place and you're not in the right place? That's what I feel like on Twitter sometimes. <laughs> Is that weird? I don't know. So don't send me a message on Twitter because I won't get it. <laughs> it will sit there forever before I notice it. You do too. <laughs> oh, Laura, it's weird, isn't it? It feels like it's for, it's a little bit prestigious or something. Prestigious, I don't know. Pre um, what do you call it? Um, um, I don't know. It's just, I don't know. I just feel out of place there. Like it's, it's um, I don't know. <laughs> to explain it's pretentious is that it is that the word that's kind of what it feels like sometimes there's like this whole other community that do twitter and it's just different i'm just not used to it i guess but i still try to post regularly if i can <laughs> <laughs> oh, Linda, you feel that? Oh. Here is great. Here, I don't care where you're from what you do you're welcome just don't be mean <laughs> all right there we go now moving on to 
olive brown, which is kind of green, kind of weird. I'm going to come over the top using light pressure, come over the top of it. Um, just doing the veins at the moment because we're ignoring this silhouette bit. That's just part of the background now. And we're just going to colour the leaf like it was a leaf. So just coming over the top of that. I'm still using light pressure in these areas. I don't want to push, put any pressure down yet because uh, we've still got a couple of layers and when we finish layering we should only have a little bit of tooth left anyway. Or maybe even none. Depends. Going over the top. Oh, I have Pinterest too, actually. I don't get to post a lot on there. I forget. I forget to do it. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's so many places that you can post, so... I already feel like I annoy everybody on Facebook sometimes, so I've actually left quite a few groups. Now, there was actually a big one that I was posting in and I got a rude reply off someone about something, a link or something. I was like, no, nah, I don't need it. I'll just leave. People can be so rude sometimes and uh, I don't think they even realize they're doing it I've been known to say things that people have thought I was rude though so I do understand that things get um, taken out of context and it is hard sometimes but anyhow doesn't matter I don't mind I don't need it I just leave and got plenty of other places <laughs> I've got uh, green ochre which is my lightest color and I'm gonna come over everything now just filling out the rest of the leaf leafy leafy felt sorry for you <laughs> Jenny I'm the same I look for like um like flowers and I love mythical and fantasy images so I might go looking for ideas for something and end up there on there for the whole day it's the same on Instagram though if you I, you can just go down that rabbit hole and you're just stuck <laughs> now uh, I just want to add a few details in this section here so using the olive black I want to put a little bit of a shadow in the crease of the leaf here and just down that side same here bit of a crease and down the side adding a little bit of detail there and then just blending it out with the colors that we used before so we've got Olive brown. Blending that out. And then the green ochre. So that's a base of what we're going to be doing. <laughs> they have. So don't bring that here, guys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Hi, is it Ciara? Ciara? Kiara? Kiara? I don't know. One or the other? Welcome and thank you. <laughs> Alright, Trish and... I've already said hi to awesome. I think I've I've, I've said hi to everyone. <laughs> Let's do a flip through, guys, uh, and then we'll do a giveaway. Uh, Jenny's got another image that she's going to be giving away. One, 
it will be uh, one person will enter the draw for your chance. <laughs> I get the strangest email. Sorry, I just got an email. Distracted me. See, I get distracted so easily. <laughs> um, she's giving away an image. I was trying to find the image. That's why I was on my phone looking for the image that she's going to be giving away today. I probably should have posted it up. So a Halloween themed image from the Shibby Doodle Whimsy Characters 4. Do I have that book? Is that the one we just did? I'm confused. <laughs> I don't think I have this book either, Miss Jenny. Uh, we'll talk about that later. Anyway, this is the image that she's going to be giving away in the giveaway. And it will be a digital copy. These are those Lyra pencils, aren't they? These this here is that a Lyra pencil anyway um <laughs> so to one person uh, in the giveaway we'll be doing that but let's do the flip through first and uh, you guys can check so this is the this flip through is for let me get this right should be doodle whimsy characters coloring book volume three yeah that's it <laughs> it's available as a book on amazon and it's also available on Etsy as a digital version. I've popped both of the links up there for you already. <laughs> what was that, Jenny? Oh, it's not finished. <laughs> oh, there you go, guys. Special, special uh, image that no one has yet then. Thank you so much, Jenny. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm going to pop the flip through on now for you.
So guys, what'd you think? <laughs> now, I just wanted to mention, um, actually I might be able to show you. Give me a moment. The, um, on her Etsy page, I'm just going to go to Etsy. Give me a sec. I just have to, uh, share my screen with you. You get to see all of my notifications uh, and uh, what's in my cart, maybe. No. <laughs> uh, let's have a look. Let me see if I can share this fairly easily. Bear with me. Here we go. Let's have a look. Wait, I've got a cup of coming. Wait, I'll grab that first. <coughs> Thank you very much. Ta. Hubby just made me a cuppa, so I've just got that. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at her Etsy shop here. All right. Oh, hang on. It's a bit out of place. Let me just shrink that... Uh, down a little bit because uh here we go can we see that most of it <laughs> let's have a look all right this is jenny's shop look at this and uh, you know how you guys were saying oh i really like the um the It's having a heart attack. Hang on. Ah, no, I need to change something here. It's not working. Let me just shrink it down a little bit. Ah, there we go. We've got the whole page now. There we go. Let's try that. That might work better. All right. <laughs> now, on her Etsy store, you can actually buy little packs. So... I know that there was a pack of characters. Jenny, you might need to point me in the right direction, but I'm sure you had... Oh, here we go. Here's a monster one, for example. Um, with just the monster pack. And that was out of another book. So she does like little packs for you. So you can find... Uh, I can't see them, though. I'm having trouble finding them. Is this another pack? go so there's a couple oh there you go there they are I knew they were on there <laughs> so you can get the Wizard of Oz set uh, without having to purchase a whole book so uh, this is in Australian dollars by the way um, so it might be slightly different for your country but uh, this is one out of I think I might do this uh, big cat coloring book or big animal coloring book next week uh, for you as a flip through but this is out of that set so there's lots of different packs that you can purchase with just yeah so I just thought I'd show you that she's got heaps of stuff on 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 Etsy there um, that you can have a look at go back to what's this the animal one which is I might do a flip through of this one next week looks pretty cool Some pretty animals in that one. Um, but yeah, they're all on here. Look at that. This is an individual Santa's elf one. Uh, this looks like a Halloween one. There you go. Ah, there you go. That's the one that uh, she's going to give away today. This uh, image here that we were showing you before. But yeah. How cool is that? How cool is that? All right. Done. I can close that now. All right. <laughs> so uh, even if you really like a couple of the images, some of them are in packs. So if you did just like the, um, the Oz pack, you could just buy that instead of buying the whole book. It's up to you. But um, there are lots of different offers on there. So go check it out. All right. Got my tea. I'm good. 
Uh, we need to get this done because uh, here I was thinking we weren't gonna we were gonna have all this time, but we've chatted so much. Uh, but let's do a giveaway. So we're giving Jenny's giving away uh, this little little lady, little Halloween witch lady. She's very cute actually. And um, if you won last week, I can't remember who won last week. Someone won last week. It was Helen. Um, uh, then, obviously, we don't enter today's giveaway, but everyone else is welcome to join in. So, let's do the giveaway rules. Here we go. Pick one number between 1 and 100. One number only per person. The first person to call that number owns that number. No chatting during number calling until the winning number is drawn and no numbers before the words go, go, go or after stop, stop, stop will be counted. The reason that we don't do any chatting in between while the giveaway is going on is so that we can see all the giveaway numbers all at once and um, it makes it easier for us admin, us, me and admin, <laughs> to uh, check who did win. The number closest to the generated number without going over it wins. So uh, make sure that you are on live chat in regards to that, not on top chat. So click on that little arrow at the top of the chat box and make sure that you have selected live chat. Otherwise you won't be able to see when I type and um, also you won't be able to see other people's posts as well. So any giveaway or promotion is in no way sponsored, endorsed or administered by YouTube or Jenny Willett. All right, have we got that? <laughs> Have we got that? Stop it, Mia. <laughs> Get off top chat. Oh, has it? Probably. <laughs> Thanks, Linda. Um, it was done actually really quickly and I've just left it. So, um, yeah. Hi, Kim. Welcome. <laughs> bad, 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 bad. All right, so we're gonna do the giveaway. So it is for one single PDF image. <laughs> I can't find my thing, here we go. Good luck everybody, and we're off. Don't forget there is a time delay, and that's another reason why you need to be on live chat, because there's a time delay from when I say go to when you guys see it. Let's do a timer. I'm going to give you... Oh, the time has changed. I updated my base, my um, iP uh, iPhone and uh, everything's changed. All right, so I've done this uh, first layer. I want to go in with a second layer. So before we start the second layer, I'm going to go in with black, ivory black. And I'm just going to draw a nice sharp line down the middle of these veins just to define them that little bit more nice and thin just like that and I also I'm just going to put a bit of a sharp line around the silhouette shadow there just to define that a little bit too All right, no chatting during number calling, guys. After we finish this, we can do it, <laughs> which is almost time. All right, just wait until I draw the winning number before we start chatting. Oh, you just got in there, Pam. Well done. <laughs> All right, I've got random.org on my phone. I'm just going to go to that website and um, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit there so we can see so between 1 and 100 to generate 
That's number 15. So, who got under 15? Kim missed out there. Uh, Abby got 13. And Megan wasn't quite close enough. So, it's Abby. Just double check that with all the admins there. Miss Abby, congratulations, my lovely. Uh, I'll get your details off to Jenny and she will send you that. How exciting. Congratulations. <laughs> Big thank you to Jenny for this beautiful image uh, for everybody and also for the giveaway prizes as well and for joining us today because we love having you here. We do, we do, we do. <laughs> I'll be in contact with you, my lovely. I'm trying to drink my cuppa and colour at the same time. Uh, I'm going back to ivory black now. And uh, I'm just going to go over the top of the veins again and a little on the sides like we did before. So I'm just repeating the same steps in step in the first layer and we're just going to repeat them now to create some depth and make these look nice and have some nice light coming through them so just coming over with that olive black first said we're just sort of blending out and what's going to happen is now we're going to slowly build up on what we've already done and we're going to gradually cover over all of the tooth of the paper That's a good idea, Kim. I just put all mine into a folder um, under the artist's name on my computer and um, and I put each book into an individual folder so I know what I've got there and then when I'm looking at books I can see what I've got and don't have. I have a lot of PDFs as well because obviously doing what I'm doing here it's easier for me to print uh, onto my own paper and do them like that rather than from the books which can be a bit awkward when you're videoing also I find that a lot of books don't take Copics and I like to use Copic a lot so um, I tend to buy PDFs because of that too also if I can print on my own paper I can kind of trust what my mediums are going to do. It is really hard in books to know how products are going to react without doing a bit of a tester. But even still, I find even doing a tester sometimes isn't an accurate way anyway, because usually with a tester, you're doing a really small area and you don't do a lot of layers and things like that. So anyway, I tend to do that. <laughs> Yeah, it took me a while to count the ones I had. Um, Sahara, when I was doing, I did that interview for um, the Passionate Colorista, or whatever that her name was. <laughs> um, she was awesome. But yeah, I had to go and count all of my books, and I have so many. And also, I don't, they're not all in the same spot. Um, I could not fit them all onto my computer so some of them are on my computer and some of them are on a hard drive. I have a two terabyte hard drive and um, it's only about 600 gigs so I've used quite a bit of it. 
I have to admit though I have saved uh, a couple of videos on there as well so that I've got um, you know backups if anything happens I've got them still you know when things happen sorry I'm using olive brown now did I say that I swapped over my bad I'm also colouring over the silhouetted section now, adding a little bit of this colour in there because I want to flatten off the tooth completely now. So I'm doing that. Now I'm going to swap to the lightest colour. So you can already see kind of what I'm trying to achieve here. Uh, we've got the light coming through the lighter areas. We've got the shadow of the pumpkin and I've swapped to green ochre I'm just going to put a little bit of extra pressure on and just cover over everything now flattening out that tooth just like that I don't have as many books as I do digital. Linda! <laughs> That's a lot of books. I say that, but I haven't counted my physical books in a while. I'm going to do a little bit of blending with the full blender just to get that nice and smooth and get rid of some of the white space. If you don't have enough pigment down and you try to use the blender, you will struggle to use it. It won't look smooth. Uh, it will tend to look a little bit uneven. So make sure that you do have plenty of pigment on the paper. Get that nice and smooth. Alright. Now I need to really define this shadow here. I'm going to add a little bit more black over the top of it now. And then I'm just going to blend it off with the olive black. Coming back in with black and re going around the outside of the leaf so we can see that definition. That really will make that pop forward a little bit too, just adding that darker colour behind it. Add a little bit more black into the veins. Putting a little bit in that crease there too. Just got that lighter colour which was green ochre. Just adding a little bit more into that light area and um, and then we need the white gel pen again ah 
Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> Oh, Laura, you're doing awesome. I can't wait to see what you come out with next. All right, let's add some light. Light. Wait. No, I just fixed you. <laughs> wait, why aren't you working? Here we go. Just needed to get that ball moving again. Going around the outside, adding our little highlight in. So I'm hoping what it looks like is that this leaf has got some of that moon coming through the actual leaf and also around the outside there as well a bit. Just added a couple of little flicks through that dark area as well. Is that what it looks like? <laughs> Just adding a little bit more olive black in the back here. Oh dear, Linda. <laughs> I'm sure that happens to a lot. Just got ivory black. Just gonna do. I'm gonna add a little bit more black into this one, I think. I think I needed to add a little bit more there. So I'm gonna give it a go here. And then you guys can just choose which you prefer. If you want a lighter leaf or if you think the darker looks better, then you can go with either. And obviously they're not gonna be exactly the same because they're on different plants anyway. So I drew out the um, pumpkin and I'm, I'm going to attempt, attempt, I'm going to say that, attempt to just uh, add in where this little vine is coming through here too, I think. I'm just going to colour over that. It looks a bit messy to start with until we start to fill out the rest of it, but at that that'll do that was a pretty good attempt i think <laughs> pretty good attempt <laughs> let's do the same down here going down the middle adding a little bit of black into the shadows of that Sometimes the more depth you have, the um, the more realistic it looks though. So sometimes it's better to have a bit more dark on there. I'm just going to add a little bit more, I think. I'll perfect it, you know, I'll just play with it until it looks right, until I'm happy with it. Sometimes you got to be weary though because if you're one of those people who tends to play with it until you've wrecked it, just don't touch it because <laughs> that happens. only use um, online for images like I've done this one I've hosted this one on my site and then they get deleted and um, obviously my video hosting site is the other thing that um, is online 
and YouTube videos. They're online, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, so I've used black enough. Enough black. Going to olive black, and I'm going to do the lee or the grass down here as well. So I'm coming in with olive black on the grass. Olive black over the silhouetted areas. Over these areas here. Okay, we need a black line. Around there, and a little bit of shading on the pumpkin there. Just adding a black line through the grass, and then just around this leaf here. That leaf could have actually been going behind the pumpkin too. It may not have been in front of it. Oh yeah, it was in front of it. It's just no line. My bad. Having a moment. Alright. Uh, oh, we need shadows there. Bit of a shadow. Let's add a little bit of a shadow there. Alright, so olive black going into the veins of the leaves. So I've got that harsh light kind of line kind of going on in the very middle and then just lightly bringing this out over the top. So the black should make these sections a little bit darker now and it also means that we'll come out a little bit further with this colour into the rest of the, rest of the leaf. Almost called it a pumpkin. <laughs> it's a pumpkin leaf. But it's not quite a pumpkin. We didn't get our posty come today. So remembering that we've got this darker vein line coming around the back here. Just trying to keep that nice and dark. Okay, and then we've got. Olive brown. I don't think I have. I think I have one duplicate book, uh, and the only reason it I got a duplicate was because I brought it off. It was a Alina Lazareva book, and um, it had crappy print. The pictures had lines through them, um, so they sent me another one. It's the only book that I have two of. got the green ochre done 
going to do a second layer of everything going with black first just doing that darker line now down the middle of the veins my cup of tea is going cold I need to drink it <laughs> little bit of blending that out with black but just lightly so that the olive green blends over the top of that nicely as well the olive black I should say just darkening up that shadow at the back there coming in with the olive black I think I like the darker better. I think it looks a little bit more spooky looking. I don't know. Chunky looking. Something like that. I've got olive brown. So now I'm flattening out the tooth, so I'm going a little bit firmer than before and we're gradually just flattening out the white of that paper. And then the last colour there was green ochre. Colouring over the top, flattening out this tooth completely now. even going to cover over with the blender I don't think. I think it looks pretty good. Just adding in that shadow a little bit more and that one's done. So I'll just do the vine uh, just coming in on the bottom and the left hand section of this one to add in the darker shadow area and we've got the mm, let's go straight in with the um, green ochre needs to be darker <laughs> a little bit more the olive black you do a thin line of black around the darkest area there as well I think Do our little white around the outside. Come on, work again. What is wrong with you? My alcohol's already dried up. Bye. Bye, Sahara. Bye. Bye. Hi, Christy. Welcome. Bye. Where are you going? <laughs> I 
This one doesn't like me today. Come on. Give us some white, will you? Hmm. Don't know. It's just having a moment. It was just having a moment. Now we can add some more white around this area down the bottom here when we've colored that background too. So at the moment, um, it's not gonna be quite so. Okay, looking good. I'll just zoom out a bit so you can see it. Looking good. I'm from Australia and uh, a few others here are from Australia. <laughs> you can see them now. <laughs> so then when we come to add in the color in the pumpkin here, we're going to be able to add more shadows behind it and add in the orange and things there. I'm just going to use a little bit of the green ochre in the grass down here and just finish that off. And a little bit more black, olive black over the black area because that sort of disappeared a little bit. Yeah. Alright, and then a little bit of white on those as well. As I said, we can go back over the white highlights of this once we do the background too, so. Still got my cuppa. It's not finished. Olive black. What I might actually do is I might finish this leaf off camera because we've already done two now. And um, I think we might do the glow in the face and then uh, we can finish up. So for the glow, um, I was kind of going to keep it so that there must be some sort of candle sitting inside here. Um, and so that means that if it's in the middle here, the shadows are going to be on the outside edges of the pumpkin. So coming in with a little bit of flame red at the top here and up here yellows are the easiest colors to blend um, love yellow we're going to come around the left side of this eye and also I think we'll come down this outside edge a little bit too Going across the bottom. And what we can do is once we've done the pumpkin, which will be a darker pumpkin orange, uh, we'll be able to sort of add a little bit more shadowing in the actual edge of the cut. But um, I think we'll wait until we add that in next week. And I'm just sort of shading in Just from the edge a little bit, just like that. I'm using light, medium to light pressure. And 
and a firmer pressure in the sh very shadows so in the area here at the back of the eyes but, so this time we're coming in on this side because the lights in the middle And in the mouth, we're going to start uh, just lining out the teeth around the outside of the teeth here. And then doing it darker around the bottom of the mouth. And adding in our shadow around there. people actually put lights inside the pumpkins I don't even know we don't do them here not a thing <laughs> not a thing in Australia although I was in my local supermarket and there's this great big bin of massive pumpkins and a Halloween sign there I was like hmm that's new <laughs> Night, Rochelle. Oh, thank you, guys. Then we've got some orange. Just bump the camera. So coming over the top of the previous colour and extending out over it and out further towards the light. Bugs life, don't go towards the light. <laughs> We're going towards the light. I've done just a little bit on this side just to define it a little bit so we can see it. I love these pencils, I really do. Oh, LED lights. Well, there you go. That's kind of cool. You don't do pumpkins, they melt. <laughs> yeah, pumpkins are pretty gross when they're rotten. Actually, potatoes are worse. Potatoes and I don't have a very liking for each other in that way. <laughs> they always seem to go off. Sometimes you get them from the supermarket and they're already growing though. Like, it seriously makes me wonder how long they've had them on the shelf already. You know, <laughs> let's move to yellow. Just making sure the rest of the darker areas now, the tooth is flattened off. So I've come over that with the yellow, flattened out the tooth there. I've still got a really light line for the lightest yellow too. I haven't gone over all of the white paper yet.
And then this side again. Christmas lights, but not pumpkins, yeah. Pumpkins are actually one of my favorite vegetables, though, to eat. When my son was little, uh, we had struggled with food because he was allergic to everything. And um, pumpkins was just one of those vegetables that he always seemed to enjoy. And even now he likes like pumpkin scones and pumpkin's good. Pumpkin's a good source of everything good. <laughs> it tastes good. It's sweet and I don't know. I like pumpkin. I like a lot of sweet vegetables though. You know, pumpkin, corn, carrot. They're my faves. I don't mind cauliflower either and broccoli they're not too bad hate peas I won't eat peas ever sorry <laughs> thanks Pat bye bye sweetheart <laughs> mm. papaya pap pepita pepita seed is pumpkin seed I love pumpkin seeds too we have canary yellow last and uh, we're just going to finish that off now. I'm going to make sure that the tooth is completely flat. That was quite easy to do that yellow bit but I wanted to get that bit done so that it was done for those that are following along. And uh, obviously that, that little lone leaf down the bottom there, I'll finish that one off as well. It'll be done. <laughs> just flattening the tooth with the full blender I don't really need to do much of it it's oh it's moving I didn't tighten it when I was showing you that was silly of me Just smoothing out the pencil a bit, getting rid of any of those lines. How cool is he starting to look? Amazing. So um, we'll put a lot of dark, dark oranges and brownie oranges through those darker sections and in the creases and we'll lighten it up around the edges. And uh, we'll do the stones and the background here. And we might do a tiny little bit of the cat next week. But the following week we'll finish off the cat. And uh, we'll be done. But um, I wanted him to look, I don't know, kind of spooky. I wanted lots of shadows. And um, I think that's why I wanted to add this in here. I think I'm just going to use my white. Just wanted to lighten up a couple of areas in there. Can't really see it very well, but I've um, got to finish this one and we're done. And I am done. I'm going to finish it off on camera, but I just wanted to get that part done in case uh, others needed to go. I know a lot uh, don't actually follow along at the time and do it later, and that's fine too. 
I haven't seen any any is anyone gonna be coloring this one I would love to see it make sure you come and join Jenny's Facebook group too if you're on Facebook Moving on to a little bit of the olive brown now. Wouldn't it be awfully difficult to carve a pumpkin with this whole leaf thing going on? Mine would have fallen off. I reckon this cat carved his pumpkin magically. <laughs> And then some green olive. And then we're just going to repeat it all and uh, push down the tooth of the paper now. Oh, thanks guys he is starting to look cool isn't he I'm happy I have to be the first to admit though that these types of images the simpler cartoony ones are a lot harder for me to color I find them a little bit more difficult than the life more lifelike ones um, so yeah, it's sometimes for me it's a little bit more challenging doing something like this, making it look good. Um, so yeah, I'm glad you guys think it's cool, because I do. <laughs> a little bit more of the olive brown. Oh, thank you so much, Helen. Oh, is it Thanksgiving? When's that? Isn't that like November? See, we don't have Thanksgiving either. <laughs> we have Cup. We have Melbourne Cup Day horse racing. Spring Racing Carnival is here and started and going. A bit more black over the shadow area. And then a little bit more of the olive black to blend it out. Flattening the tooth out with my full blender. I actually do like the darker ones better. I think that the top one could have done with a little bit more depth. What do you guys think? I like these darker ones better. but um, I'm going to put Jelly Roll Pen. Is it still working? It really doesn't like me today, this one. <laughs> it's having a hard time. Come on. Show me the money. <laughs> Doesn't want to work, guys. I'm having trouble with my pen today. It really does not like me. Let's try the other one. Hmm, that one's working.
I used to have a bonfire night when I was a kid, but they banned it. What, for what, um, Linda? No worries, Trish. Thanks for joining us and welcome. A bonfire for when? We used to have bonfires in the country all the time. For everything, we'd have a barbecue for it. <laughs> <laughs> we would we would but i'm done big thank you guys another big thank you to the lovely jenny uh for doing this color along with us and uh giving us this image again if you haven't uh got it and you want to it's in the description below i've also just popped it up in the chat box again Oh, was it? No, I don't remember that. But we used to do it anyway. <laughs> Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I appreciate you being here. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm going to pop up some info of Jenny's. I've got, obviously, her Etsy store. So if you want to pop over and have a look at her other books there, you can. I've also got her Facebook page. Thank you so much, Mia. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jo Beth. Thank you. You're all awesome. No worries, Loretta. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Big thank you, Jenny, again. <laughs> no, here's her Facebook group. They got a little bit of a, um, a event going on over there, a Halloween event thing there too. As well as this colour along, obviously. Which I forgot to post the uh, thing for in the... See, I've got too much to post. I forget to post things. And uh, also, Jenny has a website too, so I'm just popping that up there. Uh, Jenny also has a newsletter too. And uh, she sends some cool stuff out each month as well. So uh, if you want to check that out there too. Look at all those links, guys! Bye, Cece. Thank you so much. Bye, Trish. Bye, Abby. Bye, everybody. Thank you so much. And I will see you, not Monday, maybe Tuesday. I might do an impromptu video. I'll see how I'm going, uh, but I definitely won't be streaming on Monday. Uh, if I don't stream, it will be this time next week where we'll be continuing on with our pretty little cat. Thank you again, guys. <laughs> Good night. Good day, goodbye, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, of course, because uh, we're here in Australia and it's actually still morning, so, um, but have a good day. Thanks, guys. Bye.